I will simplify this problem in such a way that you will never ever forget how to solve it. The only condition is that you must understand very clearly how to reverse a complete linked list in place. So if you have never reversed a linked list before, I would highly highly recommend you to stop this video right over here and watch my introductory video on reversing a linked list. You can find the link in the description below. So whenever you are ready, just resume this video. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at a sample test case. Going forward, we will do a brief recap of how do you reverse a linked list in place and then we are going to see how this problem is a very small extension of the original problem. And then we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can easily visualize how all of this is actually working in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's try to make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given the head of a single linked list and two position index that is left and right. And what you have to do is you just have to reverse the linked list between these two positions. So what does that mean? Let us look at a sample test case. In this test case, you are given the head of a linked list. So I have a linked list that is defined like this, correct? And you are given two position indexes that is left equals to three and right equals to five. So this means that these are the two position indexes, correct? So you only have to reverse this sub list between these two indexes. So what will happen is only this list will get reversed. So 23 should come here, then you should get a 16 again, and then you should get a 15. So this is the reversed order. So for this particular test case, this list will be your answer. You can see that this part of the linked list, this has been reversed over here, right? And all the other elements of the linked list are in the same order, in fact. So this is what the problem requires. And it is desired that you do all of this in place. That means you are not taking the help of any additional data structure to achieve this result. So what can you do about it? As I said earlier, this problem relies on the fact that how can you reverse a complete linked list in place? So just doing a brief recap, how did we achieve this? For example, I had this small list, correct? And you have to reverse it completely. How did the pseudo code look like? It looked something like this, correct? What did we do over here? We have a list node that is called pre node and that is pointing to null. And the next marker that we make is for the current node, correct? So this is what tells my starting point. This is the current node. Now, if you try to remember, how did the while loop proceed? You run this loop until the current node reaches the very end point, correct? And at every iteration, what do you do? First of all, you create a next node that is the next of current node. So what will happen is this next node will point over here, right? And now look at the next step. The next step says current node dot next equals to pre node. So what we are doing over here, current node dot next, we are changing this pointer and we now want to point it to pre node. So this pointer will get updated and now it points to the pre node, right? The next step says pre node is now my current node. So I will update this pointer and move pre node over here. You can see pre node is now the current node. And for the next step, you say that current node is now pointing to your next node. That means current node is now pointing to my next node. What will happen now? This loop will run again because current node has still not reached null. And once again, what do you do? You say next node equals to current node dot next. So this is going to update your next node. And now I am pointing at the node 23. Once again, watch what happens. Current node dot next equals to pre node. This is my current node now, right? And you have to say current node dot next equals to pre node. And now current node dot next, this should point at pre node, right? Because you remember we updated the pre node. Moving on to the next step, pre node equals to current node. So pre node now gets updated and you're pointing at the current node. And then once again, you say current node equals to next node. So current node now points at the next node. This loop will run once again. The next node gets updated. And then once again, you say current node dot next equals to pre node. So you will update its pointer to point to the pre node. Then you update your next two pointers pre node equals to current node and current node equals to next node. 
this loop will now run for one last time. You say next node equals to current node dot next. So next node now reaches a null. Once again, you do current node dot next equals to pre node. So current node dot next changes, and now it will point at the pre node. The last two commands will update your pointers once again. So pre node equals to current node, and current node equals to next node. What happens now? Current node has reached null, right? So this loop will now end. And at the very last, what do you do? You just say head equals to pre node. So what will happen? This head now changes to pre node. What just happened? You reversed your complete linked list, right? Because you start from the head node, and then you start moving in the forward direction. You say head dot next. So after forty two, you will enter twenty three, correct? And then when you do a next, you will enter sixteen. Once again, when you do a next, you will enter fifteen, and then ultimately you will reach null. So technically, what we just did with this piece of code is. We reverse this entire linked list in place. We did not use any additional data structures. And now, when I iterate my linked list from the head, it will look something like this. This entire list has been reversed. Correct? Just take a moment now and try to understand what we did over here. How are we updating the pointers? We are going to use this exact same concept and then apply this to our new problem. Let us see how this happens. So once again, I have my sample test case with me. Right, I have this list, and then I have two position indexes three and five. So that simply means I have to reverse the linked list between positions three and position five. Now just go step by step and follow along. You have to start from the position three, correct? That means you will iterate two positions, one and then two, and this is where you have to stop because after this you have to make all the changes, right? Up till this position, you do not have to do anything with the list. So where are you stopping? You are stopping at left minus one. So this is your stopping point, right? Since you have to start making changes from here, what I will do is I will try to store this position somewhere. So this orange box is telling me that okay, I have saved this location somewhere. Now, if you try to realize, it is becoming somewhat of the same problem. Your list starts from over here. And then you have to start reversing all the elements one by one, correct? And if you remember, how did our code look like? This was our sample code, correct? And once again, we will try to use the same concept. We have the value of pre node that is null. So once again, I have a pre node, and that is pointing to null right now. What is the next statement now? The next statement is current node equals to head. But this was the condition when you were starting from the head of the linked list, right? Where are you starting from this time? You are starting from node number fifteen right now because this is your starting point, right? So my value of current node, this will be indeed fifteen, and this is pointing to the current node, not the value. So this is pointing at the memory address. Moving on step by step, when you had to reverse the entire list, where did you stop? You stop until your current node reached the null value, right? That is where this while condition came from. But this time you have to reverse only a selected number of nodes, correct? How many nodes do you have to reverse? You can easily find it out. There are three nodes, correct? And how do you find this value? You can find this value by right minus left plus one. So this is telling me that I have to perform the reversal three times, correct? So instead of this while loop, you are gonna have a for loop that runs this many number of times, correct? And what do you do in this loop? We will do the exact same processes. Let us see step by step. What is the first thing that we do? We say next node equals to current node dot next. So I will define a next node, and this is pointing at current node dot next. Now look at the next line. Current node dot next equals to pre node, so technically I am changing this pointer. Current node dot next, and where does it have to point to? It has to point to pre node, right? Don't worry for a moment that it is pointing to null. We will fix all of it. Look at the next condition now. Pre node equals to current node, so I will update my variable pre node, and now it points to the current node. The next statement says 
current node equals to next node. So this will update my current node to the next node. So this is how one iteration looks like. You have to do it three times, right? Because remember, you had replaced this while loop with a for loop that will run three times. Now, once again, see what happens. You say next node equals to current node dot next. That means next node equals to current node dot next. So I have updated my value of next node. Look at the next line now. Current node dot next equals to pre node. So you are updating this value current node dot next and it has to now point to pre node. So I will update this value and now the next of this points to pre node because pre node is pointing at this node now, correct? And for the last two statements, I do pre node equals to current node. So pre node now updates and you're pointing at the current node and current node points at the next node. What did you just do? You completed two iterations, right? You have to do one more iteration. And once again, let us see what is happening. You say that next node equals to current node dot next. So this updates my next node to the next of current node. For the next statement, you say current node dot next equals to previous node. So I have to update this pointer and the next of current node is going to point at the pre node because pre node now points at this particular node. For the next two statements, pre node equals to current node and current node equals to next node. So this is how you complete three iterations, right? But if you look at the list, this may not look right because when you start at the head, you get an element four, you do a next, you get an eight, you do a next, you get a 15. And then what happened? You are getting a null again, right? This is where you have to join the remaining pieces. If you remember, we had marked this list node, right? So what do you need to do is you need to update its next pointer. So we are updating this next pointer and where should it point to? It should go and point to your pre node now, right? So that when you travel, you get four, eight, then you get a 23, then 16, then 15. And then what happened? You are getting a null again. So once again, you have to join just one last node. So you will update this pointer now. And what we're going to do is we will say 15 dot next equals to your next node or the pre current node. And this is where your reversal is actually completed. Just check it out. You start from four, then you get an eight, then you get a 23, then you get a 16, then a 15, then a 42, and then eventually null. And this is where you stop. So you see how we were able to reverse this list in place between these two position indexes, right? Now, before we move on to the dry run of the code, I just want to talk about the concept of a dummy node in a linked list. So once again, let us take up our sample test case. Right now, you had two position indexes, right? Position three and position five. So you were able to take up these two positions and then you had a pre node over here and then a next node as well, right? But try to think about it. What happened if instead of three, your left was one, that means you have to reverse the list between first position and the fifth position. Now try to think, how will you go on and find out a previous position to the first node itself? That does not exist, right? So this is where the concept of a dummy node comes in. What we basically do is we just assign a random node and you can assign any value to it. It is just a dummy node that will help you with your calculations. So once you have made this node, just make this node a part of your original list. So dummy node dot next, this should now point to your head. So whatever be the case, once you're done processing your entire linked list, just return dummy dot next because dummy dot next will always point at the head node. Now try to think if you had to reverse from the first position itself, then you need a pre head, right? Because that is where things started from. So this pre head, this will now become your dummy node. So this is a very intelligent way of handling all of the edge test cases. Otherwise you end up in a confusion of, okay, I will add an if condition over here. Then I need to add an if condition over here. Otherwise you will run into segmentation fault errors or error index out of bounds and all of those errors, right? So whenever you're doing problems on linked list, just try to create a dummy node 
and that will certainly help out things and make things easier for you. With that said, let us quickly do a dry run now. Before moving ahead, I would just like to say that if you do like my content, consider joining my channel and becoming a member. It really supports me to keep on bringing all of this quality content to you. Let's get back to it. On the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, once again, I have a sample test case and this head is passed in as an input parameter to the function reverse between. Also, these left and right pointers are also passed. These are the position indexes. These are not the values, right? So moving on with the dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we create a dummy node and assign the next of dummy node to our head. So basically what will happen is a dummy node gets created and its next will be assigned to the head. Now I need to make two markers. One of the markers will be a current node that will identify that, okay, this is where I have to start traversing my list. And one of the markers will be just the node previous to where I'm starting. You remember this, right? This is what pre left is the marker before the list I have to reverse. How do you assign them? You start a for loop for left minus one times. So if left is three, you have to do it two times. So what will happen is I iterate two times and then I will reach my current node. So current node is now pointing at 15 and the left pre that is pointing one node previous. Moving ahead, I need one more marker and that marker is for sub list head. Because if you remember, when I had 15 over here, I had to change its next pointer to point to the next node, right? This is why I am using a sub list head. That is the sub list where I have the head. So sub list head is also pointing over here. After that, you have your usual loop that we iterated one step at a time. My value of pre node is null. And then I am doing the same calculation. So this will update all of my pointers. After this loop ends, my link list will end up looking something like this, correct? If you remember, now we have to join the remaining pieces. And to join it, we just enter two more commands. We say left pre dot next, that is equal to pre node. So left pre dot next, that should point at my pre node. And the last statement is sub list head dot next that should be equal to the current node. So this is my sub list head and its next pointer should not point to null. Its next pointer should point at the current node. If you look at the list now, you start from four, then eight, then 23, then 16, then 15, and then your 42 and then null. And this is where you stop. If you remember, we had the dummy node, correct? So to return this list, you just return a dummy dot next and this list will be returned as your answer. The time complexity of this solution is order of n, where n is the length of the linked list and the space complexity of this solution is order of one because you did not take any extra space. I hope I was able to simplify this problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that whenever you see problems on lead code like this, reverse linked list, reverse linked list two, reverse linked list three, then there is a very high chance that all of these solutions are pretty related. They will just try to tweak a small factor. And yes, even in your solution, you must be trying to tweaking a very small fraction because it is very, very unlikely that you have to think a whole new concept altogether. And similar is the scenario during your interviews. When your interviews give you the original problem, okay, reverse a linked list. And then this is a follow up question, right? So what do you do? Just try to tweak your original solution first. Only if it not succeeds, then start afresh and try to think in a whole new direction. You will be quite amazed how much of a shorter solution that you can come up with. So while going through this video, did you face any problems or have you seen any other such problem which are a mere extension of the original problems? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also, let me know what other problems do you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.